After understanding the difference between ISA architecture and microarchitecture, meaning what parts in a computer are microarchitecture and what parts of the computer are visible to the user, known as the ISA architecture. And we have also talked about machine code and its relation to C programs, right? Now we are ready to start assembly language. This is a six video series that would explore some of the major instruction groups of the x86 ISA architecture with examples. In this video, we will look into a brief recap into registers and operands, and we will discuss the most useful instruction known as the move instruction. Uh, this is the content that we will be looking in this video. Uh, basics of assembly, that is revisited registers and operands, data types in assembly, and the move instruction. Uh, just a quick recap. So uh, registers are a fast storage memory inside the CPU that stores a small amount of data used for intermediate computations. These registers are just enough for one instruction, that is the current executing instruction. And these storage locations are addressed by names, not addresses. Uh, and we know the benefits of addressing using names, right? Just to remind, it is about the backward compatibility of the x86 architecture that we have seen in one of our video in the assembly programming playlist. Registers are the most important component of any computer architecture, especially the, the x86 architecture. So these are the general purpose uh, registers, such as the EAX, the EBX, ECX, etc. The E here means extended registers for the x86 32-bit architecture. The names also has some special meaning, meanings related to them, okay? So just pause this video here and see if you can remember these names. Well, we have already talked about these, na these naming conventions, right? And here they go. Uh, then we said that uh, these registers can also be accessed for 16 bits. The AX means 16 bits, 16 bit register. And it could also be addressed using the AH and AL, the AH and AL that are high and low bytes respectively. This is where the backward compatibility comes, right? Because for example, uh, programs compiled for older machines using 16 bit architecture would still work on 32 bit machines as long as the code is compiled for the 16 bit registers using these naming conventions, yeah? And similarly, the 8-bit. Uh, this is the x86 64-bit naming conventions. And now the base pointer RBP is a general purpose register too. Because as we will see that function calls in 64-bit machine, unlike its 32-bit counterpart, does not require a stack. And we also have eight additional registers that can, be, that can also be accessed as 8, 16, 32, and 64 bits. We already talked about what, what is the main difference and the names versus addresses thing and the big versus small. In a one-liner, registers are small storage that is just sufficient to hold the result of one instruction. That is the intermediate computation that might be required by the program yet. And the big versus small thing implies that since they are small, they are fast as well. A few words on data types. As any other programming languages, Assembly also has support for integer data of various sizes. The size could be one byte, two bytes, four bytes in case of 32-bit architecture, and eight bytes in case of 64-bit architecture. Floating point uh, data are of four, eight, and 10 bytes long. What about aggregate types, such as arrays? Does the assembly uh, has a data type for arrays? Well, no. In case of an array, just the data is laid out contiguously so that the access is similar as one would access an array. So you have to think of an array in your mind, contiguous memory locations. Uh, if you recall from the older videos, uh, we said that we have three basic, three basic types of instructions. Instruction that move data between memory and register. We talked about uh, two basic types of instructions, load and store. 
a load takes an address as a as a uh, parameter goes to the memory and gets the data st stored in in that location and puts it into the register the store does the opposite it takes the value in the register and stores it in the memory location specified by an address a memory is just an array of bytes indexed uh, by addresses you can access these locations by specifying an address okay then we have the instruction that perform arithmetic or logical operations like add subtract and other logical operations such as uh, uh, c is equal to a plus b and z is equal to shifting x by the amount of y etc then we have instructions that changes the flow of execution of your uh, program and gives you complex ways to program your uh, processor these are what are known as conditional and unconditional jumps used for implementing various loops now let's talk about the instruction used for uh, transfer of data between registers and memory there are multiple types of instructions to move data of various sizes so the move x instruction here the x could be any of these b w or l depending on the amount of data that is being uh, moved if we use move l l stands for long word you are moving 4 bytes worth of data if you use move w you are moving 16 bits worth of data and move b means uh, moving 1 byte of data the word here is a confusing historical term word does not mean the current machine size okay uh, let's now consider let's now consider the move instruction that has a source and destination moving the data from source to destination okay uh, and we know that um, gnu based add syntax we have the source on the left hand side and the destination is on the right hand side okay and we know that instructions need operands to perform operations on right so here are the the types uh, of operands that you could have in the move instruction the first one is called immediate uh, for, for example 400 in hexadecimal and minus 53 in decimal similar to similar to constant in high level programming language but just with the dollar sign immediate can can only go as a source because it does not make any sense to have a constant as a destination so the immediate operand can just be a source of a move operation okay uh, then the operands can then the operands could also be uh, registers uh, one of eight available registers for example um, edx and ex are the operands here um, eax in this case is a source and the edx is the destination so we are going to get the contents of eax and store it in edx as we said that esp and evp are reserved for special use and they can also be uh, they can also be used as operands the third type of operands could be memory since we are talking about move l so we move four bytes of memory at address given by the register and we only give the address of the first location uh, please note that the parentheses uh, that we put around the register means that we are referencing uh, the memory this means that eax is holding an address and now the operand for the move operation is the data containing the address that is stored in the register eax this is just one out of a wide spectrum of address modes as we will see later the move instruction has a very rich combination of operands to use from the source can be uh, immediate value a register value or a memory value suppose that uh, you have an immediate value as the source operand then we can have the destination as a register here is an example move l the immediate value 4 in hexadecimal to the register eax and the c analog of this is like storing a 
storing a constant value uh, four in hexadecimal into a variable var a. We also we can also have memory as the destination. Uh, so um, if we move minus one forty seven in decimal here and store it and store it to eax in parentheses. And as we already know that this means that we that now we are going to store it in memory location specified by the address stored in register EAX. And the C analog of this, we have a pointer PA within asterisk. That means we are dereferencing this pointer and write the value minus 147 into the location address specified by the pointer variable pa since we have this uh, this pointer on the left hand side it is going to be the destination uh, that is why the destination we have the register um, eax in parenthesis which is a memory operand okay recall from your programming courses the asterisk operator that is a unary operator as it goes with a single operand right if the pointer variable is on the left hand side uh, with an asterisk operator, it is going to be an address of a location. And if it is on the right hand side, it is actually going to dereference the value in that address. Is that cool? Uh, we could also have the source and destination as registers. which is the simplest case here. We are going to get the contents of EAX and copy it to EDX, right? The C analog is simply assigning the contents of one variable into another. And we also can have, uh, can go from, from register to the memory, which is a store operation, okay? For example, we move the contents of register EAX and store it in the memory location specified by register EDX because the edx is in the parenthesis. The C analog of this instruction is as we saw before in the case of moving an immediate value into memory. Uh, here, the difference is that now we are storing the contents of variable var a into the memory location pointed to by a pointer variable pd. And finally, we could have memory as a source and register as the destination, which is essentially the loading operation. You are loading from memory into the register, okay? So here we are getting the contents of the location specified by EAX and, and storing it into register EDX, which is same as dereferencing the value pointed to by the variable PA and writing it into the variable var D. While learning assembly, one thing that is usually ignored is these analogs of how an instruction in assembly would look in a higher level expression. This is important because one of the aims of learning assembly, as we said in the start, that is introducing you to reverse code engineering and handling assemblers and assemblers and disassemblers and debuggers. Okay, uh, coming back to our discussion. You cannot do memory memory transfer with a single instruction for the obvious reason that the buses are the only means of communication between the CPU and memory. The case of memory-memory uh, uh, transfer is a two-step process. You would first need to load the contents of memory location to a register and then save the content of that register into the memory location. Is that cool? Uh, that is all. Before we dive deep into assembly programming, I think um, it is. I think it is important to understand the two formats or, or, or syntaxes of assembly language that are widely used by communities working on different platforms. Uh, just a brief, interesting historical fact that at and at that the add syntax uh, is based on GNU assembler, also known as GAS, which is the assembler used by the GNU uh, project. The GNU assembler is the default backend 
to the GNU compiler collection, which is the official compiler of the Unix operating system. GAS is a cross-platform uh, utility which runs uh, on which runs on and assembles for a number of different computer architectures. Uh, it is released under the GNU public, uh, the GNU general public license, and is a free software. Uh, one claim about the similarity of these uh, syntaxes is that if you could write programs in the Intel assembly syntax that is preferred by Windows, you would also be able to write assembly programs in the add syntax that, that is used on Linux, uh, on Linux, Unix, on Unix, Linux platforms. It is just, uh, it is uh, just like different accents of the same language. You only need to remember certain things. Uh, there is no advantage of one over the other. It is uh, just a matter of convenience. Next, we highlight these differences. But uh, just before that, please note that we will be using GAS, the GNU-based assembler, in the videos on assembly language. Uh, so here are some of the differences that one needs to keep in mind while programming in assembly language. Um, the operand order tells us about the order of the source and destination operands. In the Intel format, the destination is on the left side, whereas in the GNU-based add format, it is on the right side, as we have already seen in this video, right? In the move L uh, instruction. And then we have the memory addressing, which is an important feature in any assembly uh, programming. Uh, this is just one address variant. In the Intel format, we add the base register with the offset and enclose the computation in a square bracket. Whereas in the GNU-based add format, you write the offset and the base register is in the parentheses. Instructions, uh, and then we have instructions, mnemonics, uh, size of operands, Instructions use uh, uh, prefixes to identify operand sizes in the Intel-based syntax, whereas in the add syntax, it only uses a suffix B, W, L, or Q to the instruction for specifying their operand size, sizes. And we have seen this already in this video. Uh, for, for example, move B moves a byte worth of data, move L moves four bytes worth of data, and the Q stands for quad word or eight bytes. Uh, register names in Intel, we just uh, specify the register name EAX, uh, EBX, EBP, ESP, etc. And in the uh, add format, uh, we, we use the percentage sign before the registered name. Uh, this is the way uh, both formats write uh, their, their immediate values or their constants. The add only adds a dollar sign uh, before the number. And we comment uh, with a semicolon uh, for the Intel format and a hash for an add format or a hash sign for the add format or uh, forward slash and a static combination. Uh, some examples, if you can see, um, we have the move EAX, EBX. So here uh, the EAX is the destination, which is also one of the, uh, one of the source operands. So EAX plus EBX. On the other hand, the add format we have move L and L specifies that uh, we are specifies that we are dealing with 32-bit uh, operands. And then the destination is on the right hand side. So we have EAX is equal to EAX plus EBX. And the destination is also one of the sources as in the Intel format. Then we have the move EAX and an immediate value one to three in hexadecimal. Uh, the destination is on the left hand side, EAX is equal to one to three hex. And on the other hand side, in the add format, we use move L 
and uh, we proceed uh, the hexadecimal number of one to three with a dollar sign. Uh, and then the destination is EAX. So this is uh, an addressing mode. Uh, we are moving uh, uh, the contents. The contents of the register EAX is the address in the memory. And we are loading uh, the value specified by the register EAX and loading it into uh, EAX. On the other hand, the same instruction uh, is written in the form is written as move L percentage sign EAX with parentheses, which means that we are addressing a memory location. And uh, uh, since it is a source, uh, this is a load operation. So we go to the memory and we load the content specif uh, addressed by the register EAX and load it into the register EBX. So uh, here are some addressing modes that we will be using regularly from the next video. So you can uh, make the distinction as discussed in the previous slide, okay? Uh, this is how memory is addressed in the two versions, okay? And then we have the syntax for the control flow uh, related instructions, control flow related instructions, where we have uh, where we have two types of jumps, long and short. By default, the jumps are short, and we have a long jump, uh, long jump that can jump farther in memory location, and is used uh, for intersegment uh, jumps. The short jump are represented with a 16-bit pointer and the long jump with a 32-bit pointer, okay? And see the table for yourself to notice the difference. Uh, so that is all for this video and we have laid a sufficient foundation for the next video that will talk about addressing modes and explain these concepts uh, using a swap example.